the floor. From behind, Pippen goes for the block. There's no intent there to throw Rivers' body into the ground. Looks to be a little act on the part of, of Doc to draw a flagrant. And Back to the last stand with Michael Jordan and boy, they trying to get him too. Take a look. Take a look at the excerpt from episodes five and six. Players giving out sensitive information to the press is one surefire way to cause a division within the team. I didn't contribute to that. And that was Horace. <clears throat> he was telling everything that was happening within the group. And everybody talked about Michael and then everybody talked about everybody else. I mean, that really pissed off for us if you guys <laughs> haven't been watching this documentary and it's uncensored it is really really good mm. it took me back to my youth when i was 13 years old watching some of those games that was going on in 93 the yeah. last two episodes was basically about number one the first episode was his interaction with the dream team and how they had a game in which magic johnson was giving him the business and he talked so much trash to him that it flipped the switch in Jordan's head. And <laughs> everybody on that group would say, Michael Jordan turned into something they have never, ever seen in their life. He took it over. Now, mind you, everybody that was on that dream team is in the 50 greatest players ever. Right. Shout out Mike Willie. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you one of my, my visual emoji cons in a second. But they said they flipped the switch and Michael Jordan went nuts and they still to this day feel like he's the greatest basketball player. And y'all know what happened with the dream team. Another yeah. thing that came up was a big election in the state of North Carolina, Harvey Gantt versus Jesse Helms. And when you talk about some of the most racist politicians ever, your top five is going to start with Jesse Helms. He's one of the most racist ever. And Michael Jordan's mother was a little upset that her son didn't come out and was a little bit more supportive of Harvey Gantt, who was a black guy. Right. He did contribute to his campaign, but mm -hmm. gracefully he didn't do anything. And that's when we heard the little slogan come out where Michael Jordan said, Republicans buy shoes too. So right. that came out and it, it got to a point where Barack Obama even said himself, he was disappointed Jordan didn't intervene. However, even though I feel that same way, I confer with Michael Jordan. He said he didn't get involved with politics because he didn't have knowledge of it. He didn't know Harvey Gantt, but he sent him money. So I'm kind of like, you know, MJ, if you send him money, learn what he's about and be a voice for the people. You could have done that in a way where you wouldn't have detracted from people that's going to buy your shoes. I still think they would have bought his shoes. Well, he, then, he sent him money because his mom, he he said he talked to his mom about yeah, it. And, and yeah. And so he said, well, he told his mom, I'm not going to say anything, but I'll I'll donate. So I think right. his donation to Gantt wasn't so much of, I know him and I want to support him. It was really more so of, I'm supporting my mom and my mom's interest here. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. So you had that part. And then they moved to the next episode where they got more into that they claimed the media was trying to make a dynamic that Jordan's Achilles heels was his gambling. So they got into the New York Knicks Eastern Conference Finals. They go down two games. Jordan goes to the casino with his dad, stayed out late. They start saying that they was losing because of his gambling. Then Jordan come back, blow him out the water. That was never a problem. And then yeah. that just kind of brings us to him beating Charles Barkley and the boys, winning another championship. I'm gonna give this one to you first, Larry. Of all these things that they're talking about in this documentary with Jordan, do you feel like gambling was an issue for him? Um, I'm not sure if gambling was. I don't. Well, I, I do think that he has a gambling problem, and 
you, and you this, think it's it, more of a gambling problem versus an addiction to competition? I mean, he definitely has. No, I think he has a problem with gambling. He may have a problem with competition as well, but I think he has a problem with gambling because there's people that like to compete and there are people that will be competitive in everything they do without introducing money into it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's just, I mean, like for instance, an example of that, when he went, when um, I think it was Paxton was talking about when they were on the plane and they were over there playing they had two different card games going they had the one in the back with all the high you know all the high stake stuff and in the front where they were playing for like a dollar a hand and <laughs> he said jordan came up there and wanted to play with them and said he just want he they said why do you want to play with it he said i just want to say i have your money in my pocket i think that's i think that in its sense was just a competition thing i think when he was in the back playing for high dollars was his gambling thing he likes to gamble and I think he has, I mean, he may not have a gambling, he, well, let's say, I think he has a gambling problem because he has so much money. Mm -hmm. It has not been a financial burden to him. It's right. not like other mm -hmm. people who, you know, who may blow their rent or can't make their child support payment because they were at the casino. Because he's so rich, he can gamble and, and be just fine, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe because he recognizes it so much, he's able to, 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 modulate that he's able to moderate his his uh his gambling amount so he may say okay well i'm not going to play at the million dollar a hand table i'm only going to play at the ten thousand dollar a hand table mm -hmm. you know and i mean everything that i've heard from him the dude gambles on everything they showed him up there i mean do you remember being in in, in, in grade school and pitching pennies against the wall with your friends I mean, the dude's up there with security pitching quarters against the wall. I mean, <laughs> T this dude's got a problem. T, T strings, I'm going to pass it to you, but yeah, I'm going to give, you, I'm give you this caveat too. Um, he also had to go to court because there was this shady individual who did, he was basically like, um, I'm not going to say he was a bookie, but you know how you have the pool shark. This guy with a Jerry Curl was the golf shark, and he wound up getting convicted of a crime and Michael Jordan wrote him a check for $57,000, which he first yeah. lied and said it was... Um, repayment for a loan. Yeah, repayment for a loan when really it was gambling debt. So yeah. with, with that caveat, do you feel like him not getting involved in politics and the gambling have knocked him back a peg or two? Yeah. See, the, you know, the, uh, the gambling thing, man, is that has all that has always sort of shrouded him you know as long as i can remember it's always been like a little issue with him and his uh and his gambling um the deal with the politics came into play only recently you know you know that that had come into play on only really only re recently Damn, I keep stuttering. And so as a as a result to that, you know, I think it sort of had had given people that had once looked at Jordan in a certain way, look at him a lot different because now it seems like, okay, you have put yourself so far oh. up here. Uh-oh. No, hold, every everybody that super chatted, as soon as T Streams is done and we get ready to move. I will play all your visual stimulus. Boy, I got some good ones for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I think what it is is he ended up putting himself so far in a different caliber that folks started, you know, folks started shunning. And then they started, what they started doing was actually separating him as a person from his career in basketball. Mm -hmm. but, and that's sort of that's sort of sort of what I did, you know. I like Jordan as a basketball player, as a person. I still think he's a wet. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think he's just I just think he's not like he's not one of us, you know. And so, um, but I do think his I do think his gambling set him back. And then when when that issue came up, whether whether it was him supporting his mom, you know or or and, and walking into something blindly or just using that as a you know as an scapegoat i think that sort of had you know 
you know, some kind of irreparable damage as well. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, I must make sure y'all know T Streams is very partial to Isaiah Thomas because he's from Detroit. So, you know, take everything he says about MJ with a grain of salt. Big <laughs> grain. Yeah. But see, Isaiah is actually from Chicago, though. I know he's from there, but when you think of Isaiah, most people think of Detroit. Nobody thinks thinks of Chicago unless you know. I thought, I thought he was from Indiana. No, that's that's Larry Bird. Larry Bird, Larry Bird. So yeah. to, to summarize it for you guys, and then I'm going to shout out my Super Chat people and we'll move to the next subject. I'm A part of what Larry said is how I feel about it. It never posed so much of a problem for Jordan that it cost him you know, financial means yeah. or it's creeped into his gameplay. So for me, it's not a thing. It's, you can gamble if you want to. It's legal. The NBA never slapped him on a wrist. But if it was someone of lesser means, as Larry said, and you had that kind of predilection to gambling, you could lose your house, you could lose your family, all that stuff. But because Jordan was so rich, it didn't cause an issue, nor did it seem like it hemmed up his ability to continue to make money. So for me, it's not a problem. The only problem I have with Jordan is he. I felt like because... He was a, a black hero, whether he wanted to accept it or not. He later in the documentary goes on to say, you know, I'm not a role model, kind of like what Charles Barkley said. But at the end of the day, no matter how much you say you're not, you are. Yeah, people, I, don't, people, I don't buy that. Yeah, people watch you. Plus, Jordan kept a very squeaky clean upfront image. Hence, he went and did a special interview with Ahmad Rashad to clear up the issues about his gambling which lets right. you know he's concerned about how that was tainting his image. And right. so I my my bone with him more so is in an issue of politics when we're dealing with a guy, Hart, um, um, Jesse Helms, who wound up winning and then say, we're not going to play in the mud, which was a backhand compliment. I mean, a backhand disrespect to the black people. That you wasn't even backhanded. That was just straight up. He said something about there's no celebrating in Mudsville or something. Yeah, man. That's just open-handed. Forgive me for that. That's just open-handed. I felt like he could have he could have done more on that front. Having said those things, the documentary is still good. It gives you a lot of insight. And I'm